So this is a Xiaomi 14, the first flagship phone with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor and Xiaomi's new Hyper OS software experience. Of course, it's got the famous Leica collab for the camera system, but this time the standard 14 has the same excellent telephoto lens straight from 13 Pro and the overall camera system has seen a huge hardware upgrade in the standard Xiaomi 13. And because the spec differences between the 14 and the 14 Pro are almost none, and the starting price for this phone is just about $560 or a little more than that, the Xiaomi 14 is a really interesting phone to consider this year. Now, the global version probably won't be coming out for another few months, and it will definitely be pricier than the Chinese version. But after using it as my daily phone for two months, I am totally in love with this phone, especially its cameras. It's not a perfect phone, but I think it'll be worth the wait for a lot of you guys. Now, before I go over everything, I'd appreciate it if you guys can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. It's totally free, and it really helps out a ton in running this channel. Starting with the overall design, it's sleek and solid, but it's definitely the least exciting part about this phone. It looks virtually the same as the previous Xiaomi 13 with the square camera bump, very slim, even bezels, a flat glass front and matte glass back with a flat aluminum frame and an IP68 rating. It comes in four different colors, and this is the matte black version, which does feel really nice and premium. It's not a heavy phone, but it's got some weight to it around 190 grams, so you do get that nice little premium dense feel. The buttons are all nicely situated on the right side, and they're very clicky. The aluminum frame is glossy, but besides a camera bump, this phone is really good about not being a fingerprint magnet. And at least for this variant, the SIM card tray comes with two slots for dual physical SIMs, which is awesome. Plus, it comes with a free TPU case in the box, which is actually pretty decent quality. The only thing I'll mention is that with a 6.36 inch display, this phone is not small enough to be a one-handed compact phone like a base Galaxy phone or Asus Zenfone 10. But it's definitely not as big as an iPhone 15 Pro Max or a Galaxy Ultra phone, and it's easier to grip thanks to the flat frame. Overall, it's a little boring, but really well built, and I think it feels more premium than competitors at a similar starting price tag like the base Galaxy S23 or the upcoming S24 or even the Nothing Phone 2. What is fun is a display, which did get a pretty noticeable upgrade from the Xiaomi 13. This 6.3 inch display is an LTPO OLED with a variable refresh rate, going from 1Hz to 120Hz. It's also a higher resolution display with an even higher peak brightness of 3000 nits. Even when disregarding the upgrade from the Xiaomi 13, this is simply a really nice display by itself probably one of the best ones you can get at this price tag. Like I said, it's an in-between size, so it's not the best for one-handed use, but it definitely feels like a large display for watching content. So it's a really nice option for big screen lovers that don't want a crazy large phone. It's very touch responsive, very pixel dense, and the colors look fantastic. And thanks to the brightness upgrade, I have no issues with brightness and sunlight. My only complaint about the display here is more related to the software because there is no extra dim option yet. So the brightness doesn't get as dark as I want it to when the lights are off. But besides that, this is almost a perfect display for me. For audio, you get dual serial speakers using the earpiece and the bottom fire and grill. They get really loud, even audio levels coming from both sides and clean sound coming from the speakers for all kinds of media. I also found the call volume to be clear and substantially loud, so I was never worried when taking a call outdoors. Then moving on to the true highlight, the Leica camera system. The camera hardware itself is already top end. Triple lenses using Xiaomi's new Light Fusion 900 image sensor. The main lens is smaller than the one inch sensor like what was on last year's Xiaomi 13 Pro, but since it's got that variable aperture, the light capturing capability remains the same as a 13 Pro. So with the new 3X optical telephoto and an upgraded 50 megapixel ultra wide, you're getting just as good of camera hardware as flagship phones that are twice the price. In terms of actual results, the still shots I'm getting with this camera are really, really good. This is the most satisfied I've been with a smartphone camera. You can watch my previous real world test video for even more results, but this camera is great in all kinds of environments, indoors, outdoors, daylight, and low light. The Leica Vibrant or Leica Authentic filters are default on this camera, and with the nice bokeh or depth of field you get from the camera system, this camera produces portraits that look like they're coming from a mirrorless or DSLR camera without having to edit it afterwards. The filter does try to do a lot in terms of color science and exposure, so sometimes some shots can look a little too exposed or over dramatic or overly contrasty. But that slightly dramatic Leica look is so aesthetically pleasing to me. The results are soft and never over sharpened with pretty good contrast in my eyes. To me, they're very eye-friendly for photography enthusiasts. 
With that said, these don't produce the most realistic or balanced photos that people like from the Google Pixel or iPhone. But to me, the Xiaomi 14's camera just produces better looking photos that don't need any editing to get that photographic look. Maybe this isn't your style, but personally, this is the phone camera king alongside the new crazy hardware coming from Vivo and Oppo. The video quality is not as impressive as the photos, but the Xiaomi 14 produces the cleanest video footage I've seen from an Android phone. It's not cinematic as the photos, but the footage is never too grainy, the exposure doesn't fluctuate too wildly, and the stabilization is very good while looking natural. For more video and audio samples, definitely check out my full 4K vlog test video. On that note, the 32 megapixel front facing camera is Okay, the wide angle option is more than enough for group selfies and the camera doesn't over sharpen or try to overbalance things. It does mess up with exposure sometimes and it also tends to soften a lot of features. So I think in general, the selfies are more flattering but not as accurate kind of like Samsung. Maybe that's not what you want, but I love these selfies for my own self-esteem. The video quality is also pretty clean and Xiaomi is finally supporting 4K30 on the front here, but I have the same thoughts about the selfie video as the selfie stills. Some exposure issues, but details are softer. I look more flattering and the mic quality is great. Again, if you want more samples, go check out my vlog test with the Xiaomi 14. On top of all that, you'll notice that the camera app is very similar to the iOS camera, but ignoring that, I think it's easier to use and to change up settings. So I really like how this camera app is set up. Launch is really fast and the shutter speed and processing time is very quick. I can take a photo and check it immediately, which is a cherry on top for the already excellent camera experience. That said though, HyperOS as a whole needs some work. I do give it a bit of a break since it's Xiaomi's whole refresh after MIUI, but there are a lot of basic things that need work here. While the animations and overall look are really nice and organized across the OS, including the app opening and closing, first party Xiaomi apps, the various menus and the settings, and the beautiful new lock screen setups, HyperOS has some occasional random jitters with very basic navigation, and some apps like YouTube are forced to be 60 hertz, which makes the phone seem slower, but is really just bad optimization. Plus the infamous late or never arriving notifications from MIUI continues to be a problem on HyperOS with very aggressive battery management. I had to do a lot of pre-setups to make sure I get notifications for all my essential apps like messaging, social media, banking, and email. And like I mentioned earlier, some basic things are missing like extra dim for the brightness and some essential battery stats like screen on time are missing here too. If you're interested, I go over these pros and cons more in detail in my HyperOS review video. But yeah, I can see some of these being deal breakers for a lot of people. On the other side, this is Hyper OS 1.0, and I'm sure a lot of these will be resolved with future updates. Plus the random jitters and refresh rate slowdowns that I mentioned, yeah, those aren't overly noticeable in everyday use, and actually the performance with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor is awesome. For the internal specs, the Xiaomi 14 is everything you want in a flagship phone in 2024. For the price and the camera system you're getting, it's really hard to beat the price to performance you're getting here. And besides the weird Hyper OS jitters that happen every now and then, this is a very snappy phone. I multitask a lot, sometimes even three apps open at the same time using pop-up windows, but this phone doesn't slow down and the heat is always minimal. In the first few days of using this phone, I did notice some noticeable heat on the back, but after the phone got to know my usage, I didn't have any sort of noticeable thermal issues even when recording in 4K all day during my vlogging test. Where I was really impressed was the gaming performance. HyperOS offers a performance mode for gaming and it really unlocks the peak performance for the GPU here. This is the first Android phone where I've been able to get consistent 55 to 60 frames per second with the highest graphics possible on Genshin Impact. And then on Call of Duty Mobile, which isn't the most demanding game, but still with the highest graphics settings possible, I was consistently getting 90 to 120 frames per second. Now on performance mode and playing these games at the highest settings, I did start to experience the phone getting warm and the battery draining faster. But the good news is that this didn't affect gaming performance too much and I got to keep playing with no issues. So yeah, super satisfied with the performance on the Xiaomi 14. We just need some software improvements to really feel the snappiness on this thing at all times. Then for battery, Xiaomi 14 is totally fine. For the relatively medium screen size, it's got a substantial 4600mAh battery. With a bright high-res display and the top-end Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Xiaomi 14 gets me a full day of usage. Even on a really busy weekend day, this phone could get to bedtime by using the battery saver mode, which I only use after going down to 10%. I did struggle a bit during my first week of using this phone, but after it got used to my usage, I'm getting a full day no problem. There are no screen on time stats here on HyperOS, but my educated guess says that I'm getting about 4.5 to 5 hours of screen on time per day. Xiaomi includes a 90 watt charger in the box which I'm so thankful for and it gets you a full charge from 0 to 100 in less than 40 minutes which is insane to me because the fastest charging I've experienced before was 40 watts. With the immediate charging you get here I'm never worried about the battery life. You can get 120 watts or faster on some other phones but I'm more than happy with what I'm getting here. Okay so putting everything together the Xiaomi 14 is one of the most enjoyable phones that I've ever used thanks to the high quality hardware, excellent performance, super fast charging and of course the amazing camera it's hard to put this thing down. 
It definitely has some annoying issues on the software side, which is a real bummer because solving those issues will make this a really nice option for a lot more tech fans. But if you think you can put those aside, I do recommend the Xiaomi 14. If you want, you can import it from China through some vendors, link is down below, or you can just wait for the global variant for complete compatibility with your carrier. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on the Xiaomi 14 if you think you'll be buying it for your daily phone. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.